This video is a summary on the sense organs. Humans respond to five senses. Touch, sight, smell, taste and sound. Your skin is the sense organ for touch and also for temperature. Your eyes are the sense organs for sight. Your ears are the sense organs for sound and also they're involved in balance too. Your nose is the sense organ of smell. Your tongue is the sense organ of taste. Our ability to perceive these senses is all down to these specialised receptors which respond to changes in our surroundings. Each sense organ has particular types of receptors which respond to particular changes, to particular stimuli. So these receptors are responsible for generating nerve or electrical impulses and it's these impulses which get sent to the brain. And these nervous or electrical impulses get sent to the brain via specialised sensory neurons. Your tongue, the organ of taste, has many different types of receptor cells. These receptors respond differently to chemicals dissolved in the saliva. Some respond to sour, some to sweet, some to bitter, and others to salty. You have to give an account of the eye and sight. The trick to this section is just to know perfectly the structure of the eye. So let's start on the outside of the eye and work our way inwards. So the outermost layer of the eye, the white part of the eye, is known as the sclera. The sclera is very tough, so it has a protective role for the eye, it gives shape to the eyeball, and it's also involved in movement because many muscles will attach onto the sclera. The sclera is also covered in a protective membrane known as the conjunctiva. So if you have inflammation of the conjunctiva, you have conjunctivitis. As we go around to the front of the eye, we come to a transparent layer known as the cornea. The cornea allows light to enter the eye. The middle layer of the inside of the eye is known as the choroid layer. The choroid layer contains many blood vessels. It's also responsible for absorbing any stray light and preventing it from bouncing around within the eye. At the front of the eye, we have a pupil and it's just really a hole in the iris. The iris is the coloured part of your eye. It's actually a layer of smooth muscle. It's responsible for controlling the amount of light entering the eye. So the iris controls the size of the pupil. The pupil is usually large in dim light and the pupil is small in bright light. Next we have the lens. The lens has a very important role, that is to focus light onto the retina. The lens is held in place by the suspensory ligaments. A section of the choroid layer at the front of the eye is known as the ciliary body. On this ciliary body is the ciliary muscle on either side of the lens and this muscle can contract. When it contracts it pulls on the suspensory ligaments on either side of the lens altering its shape and this is important in focusing light onto the retina. The innermost layer of the eye is the retina and it contains many specialised light receptor cells. There are two types of light receptor cells, there are the rods which detect black and white and then there are the cones which detect colour. Just remember cones for ice cream cones and all the flavours of ice cream, the colours you could have. The fovea is an area of the retina. It's a tiny area on the retina where there are many cones concentrated together and it's said to be the site of keenest vision. This is really important. The function of the retina is the conversion of light to nerve impulses or electrical impulses. So the last part of the eye which we have to know about is called the blind spot. So this is the part of the retina where there are no rods and no cones. It's the exit point for the optic nerve. It's where the optic nerve leaves the eye. And the optic nerve is one of those sensory neurons which is going to relay those nerve impulses or electrical impulses to the brain. The eye is filled with liquid. To the front of the lens it's called aqueous humour. It gives the front of the eye shape. And aqueous humour is produced and secreted by the ciliary body. The middle of the eye is filled with vitreous humour. This jelly-like vitreous humour is really important in maintaining the shape of the eye. Here's a question which came up previously on the Leaving Cert. Why do you have two eyes? Why is two eyes better than one eye? Well, two eyes ensures that you have double the vision. This increases the visual field. We get a three-dimensional picture and we're able to judge distance better. Let's cover the ear, hearing and balance. The ear is divided into three sections. There is the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The outer ear, it's filled with air. So too is the middle ear filled with air. 
In contrast, the inner ear is fluid filled. It contains liquid. To understand how the ear works and hearing, you have to know what sound is. Sound is a pressure wave and it's caused by vibrations. So vibrating objects cause these pressure waves and they travel towards your ear and they enter your ear at the pinna. The pinna is made of cartilage and it works really as a funnel. It just channels sound waves or these pressure waves into the ear. These sound waves enter the pinna and travel down the auditory canal where they hit off the eardrum, a thin membrane causing it to vibrate. The eardrum begins to vibrate and attached to the other side of the eardrum is the first of the ossicles, the three tiny bones of the middle ear. The first of which is the hammer, which vibrates, attached to which is the anvil, which now starts to vibrate. And attached to the anvil is the stirrup, which then also begins to vibrate. The ossicles have a very important function. The function is to transmit the vibrations onwards and to amplify those vibrations. A tube known as the Eustachian tube connects the ear, the middle ear, to the pharynx, so to the throat. It's usually closed and when you yawn or when you drink, sometimes it pops. The function of the Eustachian tube is very important. It's responsible for equalizing air pressure on either side of the eardrum. So sound waves hit against the eardrum, causing it to vibrate, which in turn made the hammer, the anvil, and then the stirrup vibrate. The stirrup is connected to the oval window, and when it vibrates against this oval window, it passes the vibrations onwards into the fluid-filled cochlea. So the fluid-filled cochlea is the first part of the inner ear. These vibrations cause pressure waves to form in the fluid of the cochlea, and these pressure waves get converted to nerve or electrical impulses in the cochlea. The pressure waves in the fluid of the cochlea caused receptors, which are hairs in the cochlea, to move and it's this that generated the nervous or the electrical impulse. These nerve or electrical impulses exit the cochlea via the auditory nerve, where they go to the brain for interpretation. The vibrations enter the cochlea via the oval window and then those pressure waves dissipate out via the round window. The ear also has an important role in balance. The part of the ear, the inner ear, which deals with balance is known as the vestibular apparatus. This is made up of the three semicircular canals. These fluid-filled semicircular canals act exactly like spirit levels. The movement of the fluid in these semicircular canals is picked up by specialized receptors and it's sent to the brain. Basically, as the fluid in these semicircular canals move when you move the direction of your head, it's picked up by receptors which change this movement into an electrical impulse. This electrical impulse is sent to the brain via the vestibular nerve. And you know it's sent to the cerebellum, which deals with balance. Balance alone is not down to the vestibular apparatus. It's a coordinated response. It takes receptors in your feet, your muscles and your brain all working together. So you have to know one disorder of the ear and the one we learn is glue ear. This is when the middle ear fills with fluid. Instead of having air, it fills with a sticky fluid. This buildup of sticky fluid prevents those ossicles, the tiny bones, from vibrating or moving and so hearing is reduced significantly. If glue ear does not resolve on its own, well then medical intervention is needed. This involves the insertion of grommets, little tubes, into the eardrum. An incision is made in the eardrum to drain the fluid from the middle ear, the grommets are inserted and after a while they fall out. So that was the eye and the ear, hasn't been asked in a very long time. Best of luck in those exams, I hope the revision is going well, make sure you're using your book and doing past papers. As always, the professional looking icons, the black and white pictures are all from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member, but I want to recognise the artists as above.